Hello, my name is Gerald Watkins Jr. I'm an educator and musician based in New Orleans, Louisiana. Today, I'll be sharing my personal philosophies and I'll discuss drumming techniques for small and large ensembles. The first question we must ask ourselves is, what is the role of the drummer in a jazz ensemble? Many people have different answers to this question, but I believe that drummers must play musical time that generates a swing and feel, accompany the band and support the music, create rhythmic spark or energy within the music, and play musical solos when required. Now, let's break that down even more. How do we play musical time that generates a swinging feel? First, we must realize that jazz at its origin is a dance music, so there must always be a strong sense of the groove. The music must also have forward momentum without rushing. Uh, you must have balance and control of your limbs. And also, you must have a good sound that is based in technique. All these things contribute to your groove. Next, we'll talk about bass drum feathering. In, the, in a big band, the bass drum is very important. Um, for this video, I have a 20-inch bass drum, but bands have used 22s, 24s, and 26-inch bass drums. The bass drum is to reinforce the bottom end along with the bass player in the band. Um, the, the, the entire ensemble needs to feel it. It's, it's not much of a volume thing, but a feel thing. So next, what I will do is demonstrate the technique of feathering the bass drum. Also, we talked about playing with forward momentum. So we can use the bass drum to give us forward momentum. We do that by what's called dropping bombs and playing on upbeats or playing uh, forward in the time. So we don't want the time to rush. We don't want it to feel frantic. We want it to feel relaxed, but the music should always be pushing forward. So what I'll do is I'll demonstrate some dropping bombs um, and being able to control the, uh, the dynamics within the bass drum is also important. So when you're feathering, you want the bass drum dynamic to be lower than it is when you drop bombs. The groove in jazz should be strong just like it is in any other music, whether you're playing hip hop, whether you're playing jazz or blues, the groove in jazz should be as strong or stronger. Um, some common uh, mistakes that drummers make is that they play jazz timidly or they play jazz um, with reservation, but th there should be that same vigor, that, that same type of pocket that, that we feel in funk music, it should also be in jazz. Uh, just like, say if your director asks you to play a shuffle or, um, or, or the chop wood, you, it has to have that same uh, intention. So uh, I'll demonstrate some common grooves that we'll have to play within the big band. So the first one I'll do is the jazz shuffle.
So we talked about technique in the first segment. Um, and in the jazz shuffle, you must have control in your left hands to be able to play the ghost notes and play the accents notes, the accented notes. Here we go. And then you add that with the rest of the band, uh, with the rest of the drum set, excuse me, and we create an uh, overall groove that sounds like this. Another groove that you'll be asked to play is to chop wood. All that is is to play on the rim shot on two and four, or sometimes just on beat four. I'll demonstrate that now. Two, one, two, eight. <laughs> When chopping wood, you have to find the sweet spot with, with the stick, with the butt of the stick and the rim of the snare drum to get a good pop. You don't want that sound to be weak. You don't want to go too far up the stick or too far down the stick where it sounds like, see how that sounds flat? But you want to kind of get the sweet spot of the stick so you can get a good, nice, a nice solid sound. Another groove you'll be asked to play is conga swing, where you mimic the sound of a conga player uh, with the drum set. And I'll demonstrate that for you right now. In that groove, you must have the same intention, the same type of groove, uh, the same technique to be able to get a good pop on a snare drum, um, and also be committed to the groove. Always, always play um, with the groove in mind and, and making sure that the band not just hears you, that they feel you. Feel is, is, is a very important thing in the big band. Uh, next, I'll demonstrate um, a technique that many drummers don't deal with enough is playing on the hi-hat. Um, the early bands, a lot of the early bands, the drummer exclusively kept time on the hi-hat. So what I'll do is I'll demonstrate playing uh, two feel on the hi-hat, and then I'll demonstrate playing in four on the hi-hat. So those are some of the grooves that you'll be asked to play in a big band. Now we must ask ourselves, how do we accompany the big band and the music? Um, the best way to do this is to listen to records and knowing the proper sound of the band and, and learning the language and listen to what's being played and 
um, being able to play the proper response. Um, so when there's a soloist, the big band becomes a small group. So you have to be intuitive to what the horn players are playing. This is this is something that can't be taught on a video or or can't be learned in a book. This is from trial and error and listening to records. And, and that, that's why records are the most important thing because they give you all the knowledge that you need. Um, books are great and, the, and, the, and they're a great supplement, but the true knowledge is found in the records. So I would encourage you to... Listen to the records and listen to how different big bands and how different uh, drummers in big bands support the soloists. When, how much do they play? Um, how much do they leave space? Uh, what are some things they do? Or what are some things that they, that they, um, that they don't do? So um, I would encourage you to, 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 to check out some bands. I'll provide a page of resources of different uh, bands and different drummers that you could uh, listen to to kind of gain some more insight of how to properly comp behind a soloist. Another important aspect of big band drumming is being able to read and interpret charts and not just reading the chart, but memorizing the chart. Getting off the page is essential to being mentally free enough to accurately support the music. You know, so in a big band, you want to play music and not just read the hits. You know, you want to be able to uh, be in the moment and you want to be able to be actively listening and, and actively responding um, to what's being played around you. You know, you want to have rhythmic uh, spontaneity and you want to be able to improvise. That's the true essence of jazz. So once you... Once you're able to internalize the music, you can properly play and set up the hits. You can do things to create uh, tension in the music. Um, you can do things like create dy uh, dynamic contrast. Uh, matter of fact, I'll, I'll demonstrate some things you can do. So uh, one thing that's used a lot in big bands to, to build up to a climax is by using a press roll uh, to build up to a, a great moment of tension. So I'll demonstrate that for just one second. And so what that press row does is create tension and signals to the band, okay, that there that there's something coming. It creates some type of anticipation, you know, that 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 something is coming. And another way this is done is by um, you could do a build up with the toms. Uh, you can use the floor tom, and you can use the snare drum to do a quick build up. I'll show you. Also, when the music is internalized, uh, you can set up hits with, with different fills and um, different um, uh, rhythmic cues. You know, like say you have a, uh, a hit on the end of one. You know, you can set that up in a different, in a, in a, in a, in, in a variety of ways. Uh, so let me show you. We're gonna we're gonna set up a hit on the end of one. You know, different different things like that. Different things that uh, that you gain once you first of all have listened to records and, and, and listened to, to many to many drummers. And I will provide a page of, a page of resources for you to check out. 
Um, also, uh, like I said, uh, internalizing it and, and knowing what's going on around you and, and being, being able to listen and also being able to play musically and being able to match uh, shorter sounds. So like a lot of stabs that you might have in the trumpets and the trombones, you can match those sounds with a quick snare drum hit or a quick uh, 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 cymbal hit. Also, uh, longer sounds, you know, you, you, could, you can match longer sounds with the crash, you know? Um, and even, even lower and high pitch sounds. So say you wanna match a, a, a lower pitch sound, you can, you can use um, the bass drum, you know, to match some of, lower, some of the lower instruments in the band. And, and also for the, some of the higher sounds, you know, you can use um, a splash cymbal or, or the bell of the cymbal or the rim of the snare drum. So what I'll do is I'll play some time and um, I'll move around the kit and I'll highlight some of the short sounds and some of the long sounds, and I'll uh, demonstrate some of the high sounds and some of the low sounds, okay? So, as a drummer in the big band, you have to you have to know what's what's appropriate for the musical situation. And these things come by trial and error. I'm just presenting a few things for you guys to think about um, when you're in your practice room, a few things for you to think about when you're, you're um you're in rehearsals at school. Um, another thing about ca capturing the sound of the big band is knowing the proper equipment to use. For this video, I have a 20 inch bass drum and a 12 inch uh, rack tom and a 16 inch floor tom. And I have them tuned pretty low so the, the, the bottom of the band can be supported. You know, the, 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 big, the big band, you know, has f uh, four or five trumpets, uh, four or five trombones, or usually four trombones, five saxophones. So those, those instruments kind of occupy the higher frequencies. The drums, and, the, and, and along with the upright bass player, um, those instruments are kind of used to uh, occupy the lower frequencies. So your drums must be tuned in a manner that fits the band sonically. So also I'm using nylon tip cymbals, um, nylon tip sticks, excuse me, um, on the cymbals, so the sound of the cymbal can uh, ring through out the band, and, 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 the, and the band can kind of lock in with the cymbals that I'm playing um, and, and hear my pulse. One last thing I'll talk about in big band drumming is soloing. Um, you want your rhythms to be clear and effective. Uh, you want the band to be able to follow your solo, and you want to be able to start and stop and, and, and lead the band back into the tune seamlessly. You know, so um, a lot of times drummers get anxiety about solo winning, especially, especially new drummers, they don't really have um, that much vocabulary, but you, you really don't have, you don't have to have extensive vocabulary to effectively solo. You can just play very, very simple. You can actually just keep it all on one surface if you want. Um, you can play time in your feet, and say you want to say you're new to soloing, you can keep the whole soloing, uh, you can keep your whole drum solo on one surface. So what I'll do is, I'll de I'll demonstrate a basic big band drum solo on one surface. I'll I'll, I'll solo on the snare drum, and then I'll do um, a solo on the the tom toms, and I'll keep my feet going, which keeps uh, the band. Uh, um, notified of where, of where you are and where your time is. So we'll, we'll, I'll demonstrate that for a second.
You can also move it around. You can, you can play, you can keep your feet going and move around in your hands and, and, and be melodic in your hands um, between, the, between the tom-toms. You can also leave a lot of space. And, and as you can hear, just repeat some of the same ideas. You, what you want to do is develop simple ideas so you don't lose your bandmates, um, so you can enter your solo smoothly, and so you can come out of your solo smoothly. And that's the most important thing. You don't want to play a solo that loses the band because you can, play the, you can play the greatest solo in the world, but if the band doesn't come back in with you, it's like kicking over a bucket of milk. So you want to play in a way that doesn't lose the people that you are playing with. And that is what uh, music is all about. It's not about you. It's about being able to steer the band. As the, as the drummer, you are the driver of the bus. You are the quarterback of the team. So you have to make sure that, you know, the band knows where you are. The band's able to follow you. And the band is able to uh, come in when, when you're done. So what I'll do is... Um, I'll play a little bit of time. I'll demonstrate playing a, a simple big band solo that um, I'll start on one surface and I'll develop it a little bit around the kit and then I'll give a, a simple setup for the band to rejoin me, okay? You know, so also the next way to build your vocabulary is to transcribe. You have to do this. This is a this is an important process of building your big band drumming language is transcribing the masters and learning exactly what they play. There's a quote that says good players borrow and great players steal. In jazz music, it is okay to steal because it's, it's in the language. And how do we learn language? Think about how we learn the English language. Think about how we learn our ABCs and how we learn how to talk. We mimic the sounds of our parents or the people who raised us until we're old enough to be able to formulate words on our own. So that same method applies to anything related to music, whether it's keeping time in a big band, whether it's playing solos in a big band, whether it's developing our feel in a big band. Everything goes back to listening to records, playing along with records, uh, stealing from the records, and then the records is the first part, and then being able to apply those things in a musical situation. You know, so when you're in rehearsal or when you're around your friends or whether you're jamming or um, at, a, at, a, at a gig, um, those things that you've, you've worked in your practice room, now here's the time for you to develop those ideas because some things are going to work and some things aren't going to work. And it's a personal journey that you must figure out for yourself. Good luck. So now we will discuss drumming in a small ensemble and how that changes from drumming in a big ensemble. So the first thing is obvious. The small ensemble is smaller. The big band has about 20 or more people in it. A small group might be a trio or a quartet or a quintet. So how does that sound change? Um, there, there's less members of the band, so the drummer uh, doesn't have to feel the low frequency as much and we allow the upright bass player to kind of fill that sonic space. So on our bass drum, we still feather. That's still a fundamental technique of jazz drumming, but that 
bass drum becomes more of a third limb and we're, we're able to comp more complex patterns on the bass drum and this is something that can be developed by using books this is something a uh, coordination can be used to you know free up yourself and and be able to feel comfortable of keeping the groove constant without any disruption so uh i'll list some resources a, a, a great resource for doing this is John Riley's Art of Bop Drumming Book. And I'll demonstrate some comping, some more complex comping patterns that, that are used in small group drumming with using our bass drum as a third limb. And also we can use our hi-hat. Our hi-hat um, is, is usually required to play in two, to, on two and four, but it's not mandatory. In small groups, we have the freedom of of uh, varying the rhythms with, with with the bass drum and with the hi hat, and I'll demonstrate both of those. So you have more freedom to occupy space, but this freedom must be handled with care and you must be also always thinking about the music. It can't be uh, room for you to do what you want to do and show off all the comping patterns you learn or to show off all the technique and the coordination you have. This is a, a, a opportunity to be able to support the band musically with different sounds. The, 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 the acoustic bass holds down the bottom. And now as, as the drummer, um, we have more freedom um, to use the drums as a melodic instrument rather than just a rhythmic instrument. Um, this whole thing with, with using the bass drum as a, a third leg was kind of uh, uh, credited to great drummer, a great drummer by the name of Kenny Clark. You know, ar around the turn of uh, from 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 the 30s and in, in, into the into the 40s and, and into the 50s. You know, the the bands, big bands, started to go out of out of business. Of course, there were still band, big bands playing, but a lot of a lot of jazz music began to go into the small after hours clubs, and then that's when this technique was developed. So you must know the sound of those records once again. You have to listen to quintet music. We have to listen to trio music. We have to listen to small group and, and realize the the difference between the big band and the small and the small group. But it must still have that same energy. It must still have that sense of groove. It must still feel danceable. Even though smaller groups are kind of playing for smaller clubs the music must still ha feel danceable. It must still have that energy. And especially within a small group, more is required of the drummer to create energy and to create spark and to create feel and to create spontaneity within the group. Um, and knowing the sound, like, like I was talking about before, you know, we're using a 18 inch bass drum rather than a 20 inch bass drum. We're still using a 12 inch tom, but it's tuned higher this time. Instead of using a 16 inch tom, we're using a 14 inch tom. And in some, and I understand in, in school situations, sometimes you can't control what drums are available to you. So you, you, know, you, you have to be able to adapt to any type of drum set, but you can tune them differently. So say if you know you're playing with the jazz combo at your school, okay, let me tune my drums a little bit higher, you know, so that they won't be as muddy or as thick um, in, in this ensemble. And then when I tune or when I play with the big band, I can tune my drums a little bit lower. So a lot of the same a lot of the same principles apply um, from big band to small band um, drumming. It's just knowing how to properly execute the sound and, and, and having the sound in your ear. Um, 
Last thing I'll talk about with small group drumming is, is soloing within the small group. Um, usually in a small group, you don't, uh, you don't keep the bass drum constant like you would in a, in a, in a big band. You can, um, but one, one thing you can do is uh, use the hi-hat as your constant in, in, a, in, a, in a small group. And once again, it's always about uh, being able to not lose the people that you're playing with, being able to start clearly and finish clearly and bring the, the band back in. So one thing I'll do is um, I'll still develop some simple ideas. You know, I'll still use repetition. I'll still use space. But one thing I'll do is I'll use the bass drum now as a part of my solo. I'll use the bass drum as a, a, a third limb to kind of respond to some of the things that I'm doing in my hand. You know, so you want to be able to develop uh, coordination in your foot so it can answer some of the things in your hand. So that's, that's a great way to start learning how to solo within a small group is, is getting our hands straight and getting our technique together where we can play some ideas in our hand and also being able to move them around the kit so we can play melodically. Um, and then adding our bass drum as another sound, as another contrast to what's going on around us. Um, and then it all, it all really falls down to transcribing records. Once again, every, everything is going to go back to transcribing records and, and stealing from the masters because they have all the information that we're looking for. Everything that I've played today comes from something that a master played many, many, many decades before me. It's just, it's just revamped and in, in my own voice. So learn, learning the records, learning different drummers, finding a drummer that you identify with is very important, um, and, and, and learning and learning their style and learning what works for you because everything doesn't work for everybody. So cer certain things that some drummers might do might identify and resonate within you. Other things might not. So it's all about the journey and the search of finding what works for you and what doesn't. Um, one last thing I'm going to talk about before we finish is the brushes. Um, this, these can be used in big band or in small group playing. Um, and we can make a whole video on just playing the brushes by themselves because they're a very, very, very complex instrument. So one thing that I recommend drummers do is practice the same techniques that you play on the snare drum and the same etudes that you might play on the snare drum and the same exercises you do on the snare drum and play them with the brushes because it's, it's, a, it's an entirely different feel, entirely different feel. It's an entirely different rebound you get from the brushes than you do with the sticks. So being able to control double strokes. Being able to control single strokes. And then also we play with the tip of the brush. That's how we get a good articulate sound is playing with the tip of the brush. There, there are instances where we want to play with, I guess, the meat of the brush where we get a fatter sound. That does have its purpose, but for articulation purposes, we kind of want to play with the tip of the brush. And then also learning different things and, and different sounds that the brushes can give you that sticks can't give you, like different sweeping sounds.
or different flapping sounds you can do by uh, running the sticks up the rim. Or a trill that you can do on the brushes that you can't do on sticks. How you can sustain a note. So there's, there's, there's a lot of different techniques. And when it comes to playing time, you're playing time on one surface, you know? So I'll demonstrate some uh, basic things you can do and in, in, in how to figure out the co coordination of when to move the right hand, when to move the left hand. That was a brief summary of the brushes. And the brushes are an individual instrument, so each player must find the way to, to find the coordination between their hands and, and the right ways to make the brushes work for them. There are a couple of resources out there. There are great books by Ed Thigpen and Philly Joe Jones that I'll mention in the references uh, for the resources that you guys can check out. Um, but the brushes are a lifelong study. I'm still trying to get my brush playing together and many, many other great drummers are, are as well. So that's one thing that um, you can't master uh, immediately, but it takes a lot of time as, as well as many other things when it comes to drums. It takes a long time and, and, and a lot of practice and a lot of research of how to do things your way and what works for you and what works, um, you know, what may not work for you. So that was a brief summary of drumming within a large band and within a small band. Many of the techniques are the same, but the drummer must know how to play with the different ensemble, how to uh, play with the big band, and, and how does that uh, differ from playing with a small group. And the biggest way to uh, know that difference is by knowing the music, is by um, being in, in touch with the records and, and, and the sound um, by getting all the resources you possibly can to, to help with your coordination, um, so asking questions and, and going to hear people play. So when there are masters in your area or there's a gig and, and, and somebody who's prominent is coming to your area, you want to check them out. You want to go and investigate. Jazz is all about the search. The, the, true, the true jazz musician is committed to the search, com committed to finding the knowledge that they might have um, uh, available to them or, or exploring some things that, you know, they, might, they, they, they don't know yet. Hopefully this video led you along that path and uh, ignites a fire within you to go and do some research on your own. If uh, you want to talk with me or chat with me um, to get any further insight, or maybe we can set up a Zoom lesson to talk about some things a little bit more in depth, I'll include my email um, and my phone number in this video so we can get in contact. And I look forward to meeting you guys and speaking with you guys soon. Thank you.